I got you. Test, test, test. Test, test, test.
Good morning. Welcome to the 2020 Hyde School Commencement Ceremony. As we take in the beauty of this ceremony today and celebrate the class of 2020, we are acutely aware that the world is suffering. Our hearts go out to those affected by the pandemic and are experiencing hardship and loss. We mourn those affected by violence, racial strife, and divisiveness. And we recommit to do our part in the coming months and years to help create change in our culture where every individual has dignity and worth and the opportunity to fulfill their unique potential. I would like to acknowledge Hyde's classes of 2023, 2022, and 2021. We thank you for your hard work this spring, and we look forward to welcoming you back on campus soon. I would also like to acknowledge Hyde School's founder, Joey Gold, who was our original rebel back in 1966, when he envisioned an educational system based on character. This is usually in the ceremony where we take a moment to recognize our faculty, the best happy to do it team on the planet. And this spring, we're gonna add our parents to that list who also served as faculty members in this pandemic. Thank you for all you have done and the difference you have made. We are so proud of everyone's effort to create a spring semester that reached for excellence. Today, we honor the class of 2020 who have led Hyde through an amazing year of growth and challenge. While most of them will speak for themselves today, several graduates are still in process or have chosen to make their speeches at a later day when they are ready. Yet they and their families graduate today with honor. Christopher Wilson Bejant, Stratton Peter Carangelin, Wenji Liu, Nicholas Forster Millard, Angel Iverson Price Espada, Dylan Joseph Premack. Victoria Grace Saleo, Lily Grace Smith, Jeffrey Taki Yaboa, Kristen Alexis Taylor, Jarrell White. When you're ready to make your speech, we will all be here to honor you. This year, the class began with much promise. Like most of our families with high expectations, there's often a gap between the vision and the day-to-day -day reality. These seniors struggled with holding each other to their best, and they often dismissed the critical feedback they said they wanted. Though they showed great moments of courage as we faced challenging issues as a school, such as dishonesty, disrespect, and exploring our own racial attitudes. There are also moments of triumph and pure joy with college acceptances, family discovery group dinners, spirit week, team championships. Yet where this group really came through was during the pandemic, where they showed their grit, honesty, and belief in themselves and the high process of character development as the foundation for achievement. Founder Joey Gold has often said that Hyde is much like the Wizard of Oz. The transformation begins with a belief in one's highest vision. For much of that journey, it looks as if each person is waiting for an external force to connect the deficits and the obstacles. Through synergy and a little help, 
The answers are found within. This spring, the seniors realized that they had the capacity to lead and hold each other to their best and to accept that they had a unique potential. Martha Graham speaks about that unique potential in her own words. There is a vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist in any other medium and be lost. To the class of 2020, never forget that at some point this year, you got a glimpse of your best. You can never unknow what you have learned and what you have earned here. Like the characters in Oz, believe in it. You have received a world-class education at Hyde School. Make it count and never count yourself out. We thank you for your character and leadership this year, and we challenge you to bring that leadership into your future communities. The world was already deeply divided and in conflict before this health crisis. And yet we must commit to change and not just accept the belief that we are too far gone as a culture. We will not return to the old definition of normal, but just as we have found here at Hyde during the last few months, there are opportunities to innovate and embrace change for the better. Students, many of you know how to get out of a hole. You know how to embrace change. You know how to strive for excellence. You know how to challenge yourself. And you have found the courage to speak your truth. We are excited to see where your path takes you and how you make a difference. Now on to the speeches. As I read your name, each graduate will stand in their home setting and read their speech. We ask parents and family members to also stand so they can bear witness to the words of our graduates. Tanae Ann Arnold. Stubborn, strong will, caring, leader, smart. These words and more define who I am as a person. Born and raised in East Hartford, Connecticut, I was a little girl with big dreams. I was such a daddy's girl and was with him at all times, so it was inevitable that the love of basketball rubbed off on me. I wanted to become a professional basketball player and worked hard every day to get where I am. I had a few challenges along the way, but I got my head right and kept fighting to make my dream come true. Still to this day, that girl has those same dreams and aspirations. I am proud of what I have done to get here. I practiced every day. I became more coachable. Um, there were more times that I did not think this day would come any faster, but now that it is here, I am starting to reminisce about my high school years, all of the fun times and all of the bad times. The memories that I have made during these years are unforgettable. I am grateful for the ups and downs that have forced me to look at myself in a different light. The people I have met with the unbreakable bonds that we have made and the person I have become. Graduation day. This is the most important day of my life. There were times I did not think I would get here, yet here I am. I accomplished so much within my years at high and I am extremely grateful and thankful for the support system at home and at high. I would not be standing here if it was not for my parents and my grandparents pushing me to be my best self every day. I am happy to say that I will be continuing my journey at high, I mean, at Monroe College. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandra Enrique Atkins. Uh, hello. My name is Alejandro Atkins. I am from Richmond, Vermont. I'm 18 years old and I'm a senior. The first time I made my Hyde introduction, I was in the sunken garden with all the new underclassmen in the circle, most of us looking quite disgruntled to be there. 
Little did I know the fondness I would have for my Hyde family as we all say goodbye and move on to the next phases of our lives. If you told me freshman year that I would have the privilege to graduate from Hyde school, I probably would have laughed at you. I was an angry, depressed young man burning every metaphorical bridge I could find. I pushed away my family, ruined friendships, and did my best to flunk out of freshman year. With the guidance of Hyde, I was able to work on standing up for my needs, growing healthy communication, discipline, and self-care, and finding my own moral compass. In the words of John Doan, no man is an island entire of itself, which truly embodies what it means to be a part of Hyde. As I graduate, I celebrate not only my success, but also all the people who rallied to be my island in my time of need. My family, friends, and teachers will never leave my heart. Whether it be helping with homework, having deep conversations, or challenging my attitudes, and there are a lot of them, y'all have been there for me through even the darkest nights. So to my island, thank you. Hallie Page Form. You have six oranges. You pick up two and you lose three. How many remain? When I was younger, I learned to sketch the six oranges and then two more and then to slash off three. Solving this problem, the answer is never what interested me. I spent my allotted time drawing every individual fruit, the pores, the veins of the leaves. I had barely started the worksheet by my time my classmates had almost finished theirs. My mom got pulled into conference after conference to discuss my problem. She assured them that my problem was simple. I was an artist. Seventh grade, my math teacher sees me doodling away. In front of everyone, he grabs my hardcover sketchbook and flings it against the wall. It falls to the floor, dented. The classroom was not made for creativity. Compliance, assimilation, and obedience were always on the lesson plan. So I became what they wanted, a perfect student who could demonstrate five perfect paragraphs, MLA format on assigned subject matter. I was a piece of loose leaf paper, blank, empty. I met my mentor here, Alexandra Wallens, who taught me how to transform not only my artwork, but also myself. I could remain an easily mutable piece of parchment or transform myself into something bold, something free a paper plane, the topic of my college essay. Transforming loose leaf paper, a vessel for conformity and submission, you can create a symbol that opposes these very concepts as it soars through the classroom. Disruptive, but expressive, stubborn, but passionate. Tell me to come back down to earth because I'll dream even higher. My course may waver and my destination may blur, but that's okay. I'm still finding out who I am and what I want, but I have found this. I am more than other people's approval. I'm not perfect, I'm me, and I am no longer flightless. Thank you. <laughs> Jack. Benjamin Brickin. Hello, everyone. Woo! This past year has been such a roller coaster. Resilience is a word that stands out in my mind when I think about how I've ridden this coaster. There have been tough times, as well as moments that have given me great memories, and both have, been, both have taken place for a reason. This reason is to propel me to the very best I can be. This moment right here, talking to all of you is the one that it's all been about. This moment, the one that looking back on my experience at Hyde, I will remember the most. This moment, which will go down in history as the graduation of 2020, the class that fought through all adversity. This moment, the one we prepared for all year and won't let some pandemic stop us now. I went through a rough patch in the beginning of the year. This was the lowest point on this roller coaster ride. What I learned from the most wasn't getting in trouble and going through the Dean's area process. It was that slow trip to the top of the ride, the journey up, becoming my best self and developing humility 
is what I learned from the most. This moment, looking down from the very top of the ride on all of my mistakes and achievements that got me to where I am now is what it's all about. So I want to thank my friends and the wonderful Hyde staff who stuck with me through this process, especially my loving family. Thank you. Peace. Mia Rohana Kane. Heat brush along my cheeks as the beat of my heart pumped so furiously I could feel it in my palms. It was masked by one light and the loud drip drop from the perspiration running down the sides of my face. Uncontrollably, my right knee buckled forward as my left foot continued to tap for support. It was no Apollo, but there I was on the wooden stage. It was my cue. Shakingly, the first note slipped out, but all I could do was project myself. I was no Beyonce or Amy Winehouse. I was just me, a nervous kid pushed further than the limit she had created for herself. Now I know that makes for a less eccentric story, <laughs> but I've always appreciated the lasting effects the moments had on me. It brought me to my confidence and elevated it. It taught me my words, my name, my music. They are an extension of me that I should always be proud of. I was able to face one of my biggest fears and that moment pushed me to face my future ones. Today, I'm still that shaky <laughs> legged girl singing in front of her classmates, but now I'm a spirited, self-confident woman speaking to a larger audience. Congratulations, class of 2020. I hope we all stand self-assured and proud in the face of future challenges. Thank you. Emma Joan Connor. I've spent my life going back and forth between two houses, two lives. When I was little, I was so lonely that I made up imaginary friends to keep me company. Their names were Somebody, Nobody, and Trampolina. As I grew older, I left them behind and just braved the world alone. Coming to Hyde changed it all for me. No more separate lives. I was free to just be me. However, I still felt alone. In November, I was assigned my fourth roommate. She was my new Trampolina. When I first met my new trampolina, I thought that we were nothing alike. She seemed so shy, I remember thinking, we couldn't possibly have anything in common. But I decided that I would try to be the best roommate I could. I took her to a show. Afterward, we got dinner and just talked about our lives. I couldn't stop laughing all night. From the jokes she made to the weird way she ate our french fries. As time went on, we'd spend every day laughing from wake up to lights out. Then we started talking about deeper things, getting into the things that scarred us and made us who we are today. I realized that we weren't that different, but rather almost the same. It was just like having the sister I always wanted, but better. If it weren't for Hyde's charming way of forcing me to interact with the most obscure people to find unexpected connections, I wouldn't have met Trampolina. People at Hyde are there for me when things get tough and don't leave me when I make a mistake that I would normally run away from. I'm so thankful that Hyde gave me the opportunity to meet this girl because within her, I met myself. Thank you. Miranda Francis Cully. As you all know, I can talk. I have always been capable of holding conversations with adults and seeming mature. However, the person I was around people my own age was very different. When I went to Eustis over this past Thanksgiving break, most of my peers expected me to be upset. However, I'd made up my mind that instead of speaking negatively about the experience and going in with a pessimistic mindset, I would go in with an open mind, knowing that I needed a reset. While other students arrived home for break, I was chopping wood in the snow and journaling. Being alone in a yurt with my thoughts was difficult for me because it forced me to spend time delving into my deepest feelings. I'd gotten to a point where I was tired of trying to fly under the radar. I was tired of pretending to be someone I thought others expected me to be, and I was ready to take myself seriously. I'd spent so long working to please others and to prove that I was a good kid. Despite these efforts, I still never felt like I was enough, no matter how much praise and approval I earned. 
this fall, I began realizing that I was tired of how I was living and treating myself and that I needed to explore who I am when I'm alone, the truest version of me. Though it has been uncomfortable and difficult at times, I feel as though I'm beginning to know myself. And with this comes a sense of acceptance. For the first time, I accept myself. I no longer feel like a chameleon adapting to fit what others want from me. While I can still talk the talk, now I can walk the walk too. Thank you. Maurice Suda O. Georges. Hyde has been an experience that I'm never gonna forget. I'll never forget the day that my dad and I spent an hour outside the business office arguing about if I would be going there or not. At the time, Hyde was the only option and that scared me. It scared me because I didn't know what a boarding school in Bath, Maine, seven, seven hours away from where I had grown up was gonna be like. What I did know was that it meant leaving New York City that it meant not living at home and that I would not be able to see my parents or friends for months at a time. I knew that it meant that there was no turning back. No one told me that I was gonna use it as a chance to reset, that leaving the place I called home would make it feel more like home when I came back, that I would get in touch with a genuine sense of pride in who I am and the person I am becoming, that I would take hold of my ability to love and be loved and let go of my insecurities. No one told me the things that make me more were always there, but all I had to do was da slow down and appreciate myself for who I was. I learned a lot about what it takes to be myself, to be a part of a family, and to be a friend. As excited as I am to leave, I'm never going to forget the things my family and I have been through getting to where we are now. Everyone that's graduating, graduating today, as well as their families, is going through their own process. I'm the Hyde process, but the thing I'm gonna take away from graduating Hyde is that life is and continues to be no one's process but my own. Thank you. Jalen Xavier Graham. My name is Jalen Graham. I'm 19 years old from Norwich, Connecticut. This is my third year at Hyde and I'm a senior. The first time I had to say those words, I was terrified. Though there have been more challenging times since then, and sometimes when I didn't feel as if I was doing anything right, I'm learning how to persevere and not quit. I'm grateful for friends and faculty in my life who always pushed me to do great things, even when I dug my heels in and didn't think I needed their help. Through these relationships, I have become more open with people I share with my family some things that are bothering me and even open up to my discovery group. One of the biggest lessons I've learned at Hyde was a sit down with coaches Sikirsky, Bragg and Kent. They shared their own experiences about times in their lives when things didn't work out the way they wanted. Their honesty and courage gave me a reality check and helped me understand that I need to both accept the outcome but make sure I fight for what I want. I'd like to thank the faculty and staff for always pushing me and helping me see what I, that I'm not alone. I know it wasn't always the easiest to deal with sometimes. I want to thank Ms. Gold for checking in on me and making sure I was okay, especially this year. I feel like we got much closer and could hopefully talk about the future of my life, which really helped me. I'd like to thank my family for always being there and supporting me no matter what was going on, even though I wouldn't text or call very often. You guys never gave up on me and kept faith in me. I love you guys. Thank you, everyone. Johan Charles Grinchko. A close family friend recently told me that the real world doesn't have a core curriculum. Instead, your whole life after high school consists of an infinite amount of electives. In school systems today, 87% of the student population have a confident understanding of what they want to do post high school. I, on the other hand, have anxiously sat in that other 13% for my entire life. This became truly frightening as my high school career was coming to an end. My journey through the Hyde process has been one of the hardest yet most rewarding experiences I've ever been gifted. When I came to Hyde as a junior, I felt as if I could blend in and continue to mosey my way to the end of high school. I did not embrace the challenges and opportunities to push myself. Summer came and as it 
ended, I was extremely unhappy at home. I was given the option to either go to Canada with my dad, an entirely new boarding school, or return to Hyde. I felt confident about the support and challenge my peers and teachers had shown me. And even though I usually turned my back on it in the moment, it gave me the strength to return as a senior and finish my high school career with pride. Despite my more colorful selection of attitudes, I'm so grateful to have been pushed towards this personal growth, which made my Hyde experience so worth it. The last few months at home have been a roller coaster of events. However, being able to rely on the character I built at Hyde has given me the power to finish my senior year in the way I wanted, with the confidence and independence to navigate through the options of electives in the real world. Thank you. Jack Allen Henderson. Over quarantine, I've spent most of my time painting. Most people, the painting is about what they create. For me, it's become about everything leading up to that. I made a few paintings that have taken me over a week. When I look at the painting, it brings me back to the hours I spent creating, and I am able to relive some of those moments. When I look at the painting, it isn't it about what's in front of me. It's about the countless hours I spent putting in and making the experiences, emotions, and turbulence I went through to create it. These paintings truly serve as a time capsule for me. I don't get much satisfaction from end results or wrap ups. So today as I sit here as a new high school graduate, I can't say it's very exciting. What I can say is that for every moment and experience that has led up to this moment, I'm extremely blessed and grateful. I see it like the paintings I create. I always value the process and work more than the end result. Thank you. Gabrielle Elizabeth Hirsch. I've been told that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. While it has taken much resilience to get me here, I know this quote to be true today. Life has thrown me many curveballs, but with every one of them, I have only grown stronger. When I was 16, I went to a wilderness program. It was an experience unlike anything I've ever been through, but taught me how to not take anything for granted and how to live in the present. Being at Hyde has propelled me to not give up on things even when they get challenging. There have been multiple circumstances where I've wanted to throw in the towel and quit, but chose to rise above. Never give up is a quote that I live by daily. I believe in always powering through whatever situation I am put in. My junior year, I got cut from varsity soccer. I showed my strength by emailing the coach for another chance and voluntarily coming to the team's 5 a.m. morning run, securing my spot on the team. Whether it be going to that wilderness program or getting put in the excellence group at school, I have become the person I am today because of all my experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As I begin the rest of my life at Elon University next fall, I have a lot of tools in my belt to take with me. The most important thing I learn is that sometimes what you want isn't what you get, but in the end, what you get is so much better than what you wanted. To everyone who has stuck with me throughout my wild journey, know that I'm more than grateful for you. Thank you. Jada Monet Holford. Growing up in Providence, Rhode Island, I learned to rely on myself. I didn't ask for help because it often wasn't there, so I learned not to pursue it. However, during my sophomore year at Hyde, when I was failing a class, I allowed myself to ask for and receive help. I also found a mentor who wouldn't quit on me. He saw potential and kept pushing me until I was successful. I had to put my insecurities and pride aside to ask for help and see it as an opportunity. This was a lesson in humility and mentorship and it has helped me realize that I want to be the person for others that I didn't have when I was younger. Over the course of three years at Hyde, I have crafted a vision for my life. I want to be successful 
go to college and become a physical therapist. Impacting and aiding others through the process of recovery is something I can relate to, which will help me in this career. I wanna be able to show inner city kids that no matter where you come from, if you work hard, anything is possible. Making a difference and the drive I have to be successful is what sets my soul on fire. I can't express how thankful I am to have the support from my family, friends, and mentors. Mentors have shown me the impact I can have on others. I have finally completed my five-year plan, and I am proud to share that I will be attending Bridgewater State University in the fall. Today is the start of everything I have ever wanted. Thank you. Madison Keeley Hughes. During the summer of 2016, my mom urged my brother Ryan and I into the car as we set off on a family fun day to go into our mansion in Bath, Maine. Little did I know it was a school that I would soon be attending. After an argument filled summer, it was time to pack my bags and travel to my new school in a brand new place. This quote from John Mayer has defined my four years at Hyde, especially my senior year. Someday, everything will make perfect sense. So for now, laugh at the confusion, smile through the tears, be strong and keep reminding yourself that everything happens for a reason. The number of times I've cried during family weekend or a discovery group seminar is outrageous. However, nothing compares to the moments where I've made myself proud by doing something I never imagined I could. Whether that was auditioning during PA or leading girls in the dorm, I learned how capable I am of climbing over obstacles and getting through difficult times. I now know how to lead those around me through being compassionate and striving for excellence. Today, I am leaving Hyde completely ready for whatever life throws at me. I have a vision and I know with the love and support of my friends and family, I will accomplish this vision to the best of my abil ability. I am no longer a shy and unconfident girl. I am a woman with strong morals and am able to stand up for myself and what I believe in. Thank you. Ryan Patrick Hughes. As I started my first day at Hyde, I could not help but think back to when it all really began. My mom took my sister and I on a tour of the school, but told us we could never afford it. I was afraid to go and wanted nothing to do with it. I wanted to be with my friends and family at home. One day, I saw an email on my mom's phone from the admissions office saying, we look forward to having Ryan this coming school year. I knew I had to do something, so I cleverly devised a plan to pose as my mother and talk to the director of admissions. After a few weeks of emailing back and forth, posing as my mother, of course, I somehow managed to get myself unregistered from Hyde. I'm here today, so you know how that turned out. Whether I wanted to or not, I had a lot to learn. During my time at Hyde, I started to gain an independence and leadership, which would be important for some of the challenges I would soon face. The football field became a classroom where I was taught a work ethic and resilience. I used these strengths with other athletic teams and later in the classroom. I found that I wanted to play and be successful for something other than myself. I loved being a part of a team and began to see what I could contribute. So now I again think back to that young rebel who was afraid in his place as a young man who was proud of his accomplishments, his growth, and his loyalty to his family and friends. I'm also happy to report that the admissions department has implemented new procedures since then to make sure prospective students do not hack their, into their parents' email. Thank you, mom, for believing in me and holding my feet to the fire. Thank you. Abel Henry Kaplan. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. The problem is, before I came to Hyde, I really struggled with school. Academics were never an issue, but my behavior kept getting me in trouble and constantly putting me in difficult situations. Although some of the things I did seem funny now, back then, this is the cause of lots of anxiety and depression for me. In fact, it got so bad that I missed over 60 days of school in my eighth grade year. My parents thought I would never graduate high school. This is when my family found Hyde. 
After the famous Hyde interview, we decided it was the best place for me, and I enrolled in the fall. Things were finally starting to look up. Spoiler alert, the first year was a train wreck, and most of the second year. But after almost getting kicked out twice for behavioral issues, I came to the realization that if I wanted to make something in my life, I was going to have to turn it around. This is when I started to take Hyde and myself more seriously. It wasn't easy, but I learned how to deal with my anxiety and depression, as well as develop a better relationship with my parents and work on my character. Although I still might not always love Hyde, one thing is clear. It has given us a place to work on ourselves and the tools to further improve our relationship. After a long journey, it finally seems that I'm on the right path to my dream of becoming a lawyer. I'm graduating high school and I've been accepted to Florida State University, which I'll be attending in the fall. Go Knowles. Thank you. Jia Hao Liu. Winners never quit, quitters never win. This significant sentence is constantly going in my mind, and that speaks from Mrs. Gall. Without this guidance, I would have been completely lost at sea. I knew it was the right choice for me to come back because high values personal success. And I believe life is a journey, and persistence is the beacon that guides me through the fog and windstorm. Throughout these four years, I have learned thoughtness through cross, persistence through cross country, the thrill of a buzzer beater in basketball, self -con confidence through public speaking experiences, and empathy through meetings. Without high experiences, I will not understand these qualities which have kept me going and are going to help me carry on. Today, I have reached the success of this chapter in my journey as a ship has settled the sail. Thank you to the faculty who pushed me along the way and be the guide that keeps me moving in the right direction. And my parents are the oars that consistently support me to carry on my journey. I believe my future is clear, but my ultimate destiny isn't. No matter what that will be, time will tell everything. I know my destiny is unknown and it lies ahead. My courage will lead me to lift the fog the path can be rainy and cloudy, but I will be ready for the uncertainty and I'm not afraid of it. Now I receive what I need and I will use it to take on to the next journey. Thank you. Je Liu. Three years ago, I had to choose among the four winter sports, swimming, basketball, wrestling, and robotics. I didn't know the right choice for me. I decided to pick swimming since I was good at it when I was in kindergarten, but that was a long time ago. The first time I had to swim in a competition, I got so tired that I nearly drowned. I decided to quit without telling my coach. I was afraid to tell him. Now, three years later, I chose swimming again, but this time I was no longer irresolute. I decided to tackle the difficulty and finish the swimming season that I had quit. I was all in. I tried to compete in different strokes that I used to refuse. I worked out in the weight room during my spare time and I stood on the diving board, which I was once afraid of and kept polishing my diving technique. I can't really say that all the hard work paid off. I was still one of the slower swimmer on the team, but I'm proud of what I have accomplished. I definitely swim a lot faster than before. I'm more confident with my body than before. I am tougher than before. I'm glad that I learned these lessons that high because I know there are not many places that will give me a second opportunity on things that I decided to quit. Now, I have the faith in myself that I won't quit on things that I have the potential to overcome. If I could go back to three years ago and talk to the Martin who was struggling to make the choice and always wanting to quit, I would tell him that there's no right choice. Just make a choice and make it right. Thank you. Uwe Swivin John Wen Yen Twali. Before I came to Hyde, I was very unsure of myself. 
and my purpose in the world. Although coming to the U.S. was a challenge I was looking forward to, I also knew there were a lot of things I had to overcome, like being far away from my parents. I also knew that I was going to have to step out of my comfort zone. When I first came to Hyde, I attended the Summer Leadership Challenge. I had to take a big step of confidence. I hated singing, but I had to sing alone in front of a big group of people. I had to speak in front of others and talk about my challenges, but I stepped out of my comfort zone and made friendships that would last a lifetime. As the year progressed, I started to become more vulnerable. The biggest challenge that I faced at Hyde was overcoming my past boarding school experiences. I was coming from a school where I had little self-confidence, being put down by my peers and teachers. I did not know how I would fit in at Hyde. The change from South Africa to Hyde, going from being bullied to being admired in the community, taught me that a tough road can lead to a remarkable journey. During the course of the year, I made relationships that both challenged me and encouraged me. These relationships don't end here. Although I'm leaving Hyde, I know these relationships were made to last a lifetime. One of the most important principles that got me through this year was staying true to my African culture, staying true to who I really am. My advice to all of us is to use the challenges we are facing now to help us prepare for the next journey in our lives. Thank you. Badge on win. I want to live on an open rooftop, growing plants and adopting cats. I can picture the ideal day, a light rain drizzling, and I am surrounded by my cats under a small canopy. Life has a simple pleasure and rhythm of nature and the companionship of animals. I am at peace and serene, centered and balanced. It is no surprise that this is one of my dreams because as a child, I felt carefree and loved to explore. With my friends, we loved going to rooftops, animals, and climbing doors. Sounds weird, right? Well, I've always felt like the odd one out. Matt always unveils these questions that make me ponder restlessly. What helps us feel connected to others? How do we know what our deeper purpose is? How can we be true to who we really are? Or why am I the way that I am? As you can see, Although a lot of time, my voice is quiet, my thoughts are not. However, being my own person is important to me. I don't want to just fit in and go along with the crowd. I chose to travel halfway around the globe from home to attend school in the US because I wanted new opportunities and independence. That's why and how I am learning to listen and trust myself. These last two years, I've met wonderful friends and teachers that have been there for me even through my worst time. I graduate today with maybe more questions than answers, but with a tremendous gratitude, which I, can, I cannot always articulate as well as I want to for these people, from shallow spirit and more of a vision of what makes me happy and fulfilled. Farm to hold bit now. Winners equals not loser. I think in equations so that I can plan ahead. Because like in chess, you can win if you're ahead one step in planning. However, I've rarely come in first. I was second in regional math competition, second in regional chess, second in state business, business competition, and so many more seconds. When a friend of mine said that I wasn't good enough to study abroad, going to high school in Vietnam seemed like coming in second again. I convinced my parents to let me apply to high school in the US. I won, I got a scholarship, but that's not the end of the story. It was here at Hyde that I learned what it means to be a true winner. 
with no sports background. I had lots to learn in my two years on varsity soccer. Once, I asked my coach to teach me to kick the ball higher. She showed me. I tried. But the ball still lazily rolled across the field. I can't do this. I can't be on varsity, I said. It takes time and practice, was the response. So I practiced and practiced. Then in our, every, our very last game, as an opponent was dribbling the ball toward our goal, I stole it and used it, that kick, to save the goal. Or did I? The halftime whistle blew at the same time. High taught me that it's not about where you place in the contest or the degree you hold that makes you a winner. It's the progress made along the way. It's having follow through and being responsible for your own learning. Yes, I might be a loser sometimes, but a loser who will always try one more time. That makes a winner. This is my new formula. Winner equals loser, plus one more try. Mom and dad, I wish I could be there with you guys, but I want to say thanks for making me who I am today. Sister, you said I'm your role model, but little do you know, I'm your, you also mine. And finally, thanks everyone who has been supporting me on my journey. Thank you. Rachel Marie Willie. Today is the day my life begins. It's not because this is the conclusion of a chapter in my life. Today is the day my life begins because I am ready to receive it. Throughout my life, I fired shots at myself. These emotional bullets have pierced my skin and left wounds that I've patched up a million times, attempting to stop the pain. Somewhere along my journey at Hyde, I stopped wishing that I had never fired those bullets and started to repair the wounds and work on myself. Over time, I stopped seeing my flaws, and in those places, I saw my soul peek through. Unknowingly, I shot through my facade, the unrealistic image I was trying desperately to achieve. I didn't pierce my soul, but gave it space to shine through. I found the more I tackled my problems, the more I could see my potential. Challenges always present themselves right when you need them. My experience at Hyde confirms that. I didn't know I needed Hyde when I arrived. I couldn't see my future. I was too focused on the holes. I've learned to lead through humility, to accept myself, to understand that challenges have power and to see the importance of connecting my inner and outer selves. These are the lessons that have helped me grow within myself and realize that so much is possible for me. I see now with my conscience as my guide, I am not the woman I wanted to be. I am so much more. I am eternally grateful for the opportunity to have met the real me, and I am so excited to share the rest of my life with her. Thank you to Hyde and to my family for allowing me to find myself through your support and unconditional love. This isn't the end, but my beginning. Today is the day my life begins. Thank you. Sheen, you all. When I was young, my parents told me not to lie, but there is more to not lying than I thought. In the process of has learning, 
I have achieved not only academically, but also the important thing is being true to myself. During my three years I had, I've been provided a variety of opportunities to examine if I am being true enough to myself. Family Weekend makes us be true to our feelings towards our families. So we share our deep thoughts and things that are hard to see. Honesty meetings make us be true about the mistakes we have made. So we face up to those mistakes and then correct them. Concern meetings make us be true to our struggles and allow us to show our concerns and give support to each other. But I still struggle with being true to myself. Sometimes if I had a concern for a friend, I had to say something. The moment that I truly decided not to lie to myself was in the community meeting that happened in the fall semester this year. Talking about myself in public was difficult for me, but it allowed me to let go of bashfulness and shame. So I felt relieved. My experience I had has helped me know who I want to be and where I want to go. I'm grateful to have had the high faculties, friends, and most importantly, my family by my side during this journey. Thank you. Thank you, seniors. This concludes the first session of our virtual graduation. We will pick this up at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, where we will hear the second half of the class and formally announce the official graduation. We will see you all at one o'clock. Thank you.